This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. Time to head into the newsroom. Here's Henry Bailey Brown. Thank you, Robbie. To help with the self-isolation blahs, Google has made its Stadia Pro video game streaming service free for two months. Phil Harrison, the head of Google Stadia, wrote on Google's blog, video games can be a valuable way to socialize with friends and family when you're stuck at home. So we're giving gamers in 14 countries free access to Stadia for two months. Unlike before where you had to order the Stadia controller and the Chromecast Ultra in order to subscribe, now all you need is a Gmail account, which many of us already have for free. With, <laughs> while most games available to stream through Google Stadia need to be bought, the Pro subscription does come with some free ones. The most notable of these are Destiny 2, Grid, Steam World Quest, Hand of Gilgamesh, and Thumper. Stadia Pro is normally a $10 monthly subscription. Those already subscribed simply won't get billed for the next two months. While people signing up for the first time will get all the benefits of Pro, and will be switched to a free account after two months. Pro benefits include access to the free game library and the ability to stream them at a higher quality than just 1080p and 60 frames per second. During this period, however, Google will be adjusting their bandwidth usage to cope with the influx of new users and the increase of people streaming stuff online in general. Like we're all at home these days, right? So as a result, the default will be 1080p instead of the 4K. However, you can switch that in settings for now. If you're new to Stadia, go to stadia.com to sign up, download the Stadia app on Android or iOS, and then you can play on your laptop, desktop, Chrome OS tablet with your favorite controller or mouse and keyboard. Again, just some personal thoughts on this story. It's a very interesting time to be a gamer for sure. Again, Stadia Pro has had its positives as well as negatives, such as the idea that uh, people aren't too happy with having to buy their games again to play in a cloud platform. That being said, there's other alternatives available if you don't want to get into Stadia and Google, such as uh, the Xbox Game Pass, how again you have a huge library of games that you buy that are very often cross-platform, so you can play these games on your Xbox as well as on your PC, etc., with a single account, your Xbox account, or you can even do uh, the other service that I personally prefer, the NVIDIA GeForce Now, um, where basically uh, you're using uh, NVIDIA servers to play your games. However, it's actually a free service. Um, you can play up to an hour for free, or you can play up to, I believe, six or eight hours uh, paying around $10 a month Canadian. Um, but basically what this service entails is that you don't have to buy your games a second time. Uh, you basically just log in to Steam, My Games, or even free games such as War Thunder, World of Warships, World of Tanks, whatever, and you can actually play your games that you already own on this free service. Well, if you play only for an hour. Uh, but again, I've, I've used it, I'm very happy with it, and again, you don't have to buy your games twice, which is the big factor with Stadia. Will Stadia prove worthy? Let's decide. You can now play for two months. What a great time to be able to uh, get into streaming your games. Thanks, Henry. And for our next story, here's Jeff Weston. The CEO of Cambridge Qualcomm Computing called Honeywell's efforts the best kept secret in quantum computing. In a race where most of the major players are vying for attention, Honeywell has quietly worked on its efforts for the last few years and under strict NDA, it seems. But early last month, the company announced a major breakthrough that it claims will allow it to launch the world's most powerful quantum computer this year. Honeywell has long built the kind of complex control systems that power many of the world's largest industrial sites. It's that kind of experience that has now allowed it to build an advanced ion trap at the core of its efforts. Computers use bits to transfer information. The more bits, the more data that can be transferred. Think of the leap from Super Nintendo at 16 bits to the Nintendo 64 at 64 bits. Quantum information is transferred in qubits, which have the same purpose as a traditional computer bits, but are radically more powerful. These qubits can eventually form quantum gates, which can lead to quantum circuits. That's the measure Google was using. Honeywell, however, is measuring what IBM first called quantum volume, which looks at a quantum machine more holistically, taking into account the number of qubits, connectivity, and gate and measurement errors. The larger the quantum volume, the more complex problems you can solve, 
says Dr. Patty Lee, chief scientist for Honeywell. IBM owns machines. IBM's own machines have achieved a quantum volume of 32. Honeywell's machines uh, achieves twice that. Currently, Honeywell has about 100 scientists, engineers, and developers dedicated to its quantum project. Original projections might have seen Honeywell's quantum computer unveiled this summer. We'll see how long that shapes up in light of COVID-19. Thanks, Jeff. We do have to take a quick break. The Crypto Corner and more of this week's top tech stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Crypto Corner. Yes, I missed you too. It's been some time. And as you can see, I'm working from home, as probably most of us. Um, we're running through deep crisis on a global level. And if you're working in the travel industry or tourism industry, um, then life is not easy. And as there is always, when there is a difficulty, there's always also an opportunity. And I see the opportunity very clear here in my industry, which is the cryptocurrency industry or blockchain uh, technology. There was even a research done by LinkedIn that came out with a result that companies uh, are in desperate need of blockchain developers. And that's what I want to focus on today. I want to focus on, on a positive note. <clears throat> and so uh, who's currently hiring um, blockchain developers or blockchain uh, people that, that are in knowledge of blockchain technologies? Well, first, of course, startups. Uh, there are a lot of startups that have got brilliant ideas. They have got money and they're a desperate look of, of uh, good people. Then large companies, because they know that I have to uh, move into blockchain technologies, tech firms, as always, and governments. So those are the four big sectors that are currently looking for uh, blockchain um, uh, people. And what are they looking for? Well, of course, the usual subjects, marketing, which includes public relations and communication and social networking and so on. Uh, trade and sales uh, is, a, is a big one, support, uh, help desk and so on, legal compliance and my favorite is development. And that's what I want to focus on. We are a uh, technology channel and so that's why I would like to focus more on development. So if you don't know anything about programming, don't worry about it. This, this is your moment here. And so what you'll see behind me <clears throat> is a step-by-step -step idea on how you can get into this market, how you can find a job in this industry. And so the first step, if you don't know anything about a programming language, is learn a programming language. Now, it's not difficult. Within a day, you know the basics. It's really easy to do that. It's all about logic. If you can think in a logical way, then learning a programming language is something very easy. And I would start with JavaScript. And they're all, by the way, very similar. So there's no big differences uh, between one language and the other. I would start with JavaScript because you can develop something that is easily uh, visible um, on, on a screen or so. And then <clears throat> um, if, if you know JavaScript, I would go over into Python because that's what a lot of uh, crypto uh, companies or uh, platforms are using. There's a, lot, there's a lot of help, free help on YouTube, for example. Um, just Google uh, JavaScript courses and you'll find a multitude of them. And you'll see by the reviews if there are serious ones or not. There's also professional organizations like Coursera or EDX that offer from universities like Harvard or, or, or similar uh, courses on programming. Just run through a few of them, learn as much as you can, as said. And the basics, you, have, you know them within one day. Once you've got that knowledge, I would focus on blockchain. So let's take Ethereum, which is the one that most people are using and searching for. Uh, learn about Ethereum. How is Ethereum working? Look under the hood. Yeah, learn um, uh, how they're currently doing the proof of work. Uh, what is a smart contract? All those things so that you, that you can have a decent discussion with somebody and you know more or less what Ethereum, how the Ethereum platform works. Once that's done, <clears throat> then of course you have to dive deep into uh, Ethereum programming. So Solidity and so on. Or oh, in future it will be Viper. And that is something that can also be learned very fast. There are also specialist courses uh, that offer this year. 
uh, like udemy.com and and uh, bitdegree they offer courses uh, you also see the 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 reviews of people what they think of those courses you can just i mean they're not free but they're cheap 20 bucks 50 bucks it, it it's not a big deal uh, <clears throat> but my favorite one is ivan on tech because he's been like the technical guru in this industry on on a lower level and his courses are really fantastic because he's offers uh, he offers everything from the start so if you've got don't have much knowledge just take his courses and you'll get uh, very fast to a level where you do know what it is about after about two months in this uh, uh, programming environment i can guarantee you know 99 percent more than most of the people yeah so it's a lot of superficial talk that you hear about this crypto industry but because it's a very young industry um, there is uh, not much knowledge out there and and you don't want to become a Bitcoin developer anyway which is tough uh, you want to just find a job then two months work uh, should do the job um, now of course I, I put also up a list of where to find a job so there are several websites that um, that offer already now uh, a job search uh, i would visit them and just uh, i mean the, you've got the usual ones and every country works different the list that i have got here is of course more america us focused but every country has got their own uh, uh, list of developers that they're using so that's for me um, today so it's very positive in the sense that if you uh, know if you want to go into this blockchain industry if you know about um, uh, cryptocurrencies uh, the the future's bright i mean it, it's literally like that i wish you good luck if you've got any questions then just contact us and um, we'll see on how we can help you anyway that's for me so back to the studio thanks bye Thanks, Robert. Just a reminder, we're not giving away financial advice here on the Category 5.TV newsroom, but instead just trying to give you some information and leaving it up to you to make the decision. Henry, next story. GitHub announced last week that all of its core features are now available for free to all users. That means unlimited private repositories with unlimited collaborations for all, including teams that use the service for commercial projects, as well as up to 2,000 minutes per month of free access to GitHub Actions, the company's automation and CI-CD platform. Teams that want more advanced features, like code owners or enterprise features, like SAML support, will still have to upgrade to a paid plan at this time, but the pricing for those plans has been slashed in half. The company has always taken a freemium approach to its pricing model, but since its acquisition by Microsoft, it started to expand the number of features in its free accounts. GitHub CEO Nat Friedman stressed that this move had been long on the roadmap, and it isn't a limited promotion motivated by the current COVID-19 crisis. He says, this is something we plan to do and have wanted to do for a long time, since we essentially did the acquisition, and now getting to this point to do it took until now, until it became a high priority. Thanks, Henry. Jeff, what is going on with SETI at home? Astronomers say they have all the data they need in the search for extraterrestrial life. Distributed computer network SETI at Home has ceased scouring radio telescope data for signs of extraterrestrials after 20 years. Much like Folding at Home, which is currently acting as the world's most powerful supercomputer in the fight against the new coronavirus, SETI at Home utilized a vast user-donated network of computers to analyze data, but is now heading into hibernation. SETI at Home has been in operation since 1999. During that time, it has processed heaps of radio telescope data collected from the deepest depths of space and listened into narrow band radio signals in order to track down anything out of the ordinary. To do so, it relied upon the contributions of computers from across the globe, graphics cards, and powerful CPUs in tow, all working together in order to learn of life beyond Earth. But don't you worry, it's not shutting down due to lack of interest. In fact, the researchers based out of USC Berkeley are inundated with the data. But with no need for further data, the team of astronomers will instead focus their efforts on back-end analysis for later publication in a scientific journal. The project's message boards will remain operational, but there's no longer any need to task your gaming rig with the search for extraterrestrials. SETI at home may one day return. Researchers are eyeing up potentially 
uh, eyeing up potential use cases and will distribute tasks in cosmology in Pulsar research, research sometime in the future. Nothing is set in stone, however, so it's better to put your gaming PC to good use researching elsewhere than leaving it idling. The SETI at Home team recommends lending your help to folding at home. It's a critical task of simulating the COVID-19 virus. That project is currently operating at 1.5 exaflops of computing power kindly donated from across the globe. That's a whole frontier supercomputer's worth for scale. That sounds like a great use for our GPU. Hey, big thanks to BP9 this week, as well as our community of viewers for submitting stories. Thank you for watching the Category5.tv newsroom, and don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, well, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash newsroom. From the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Robbie Ferguson. Thank you.